Hi, Dr. Mori here again with Uncivilized Vitality. We're going over the eight families of uncivilized tech, the toolkits that you find in your student handbook. So uh, we're going to talk about fire and light. Um, and then again, as always, the other videos with the other tools, and then there will be tons of other videos showing how to use these tools. This just kind of shows you what we consider uh, our basic toolkit. Let's start with the fire first. Simplest thing to do is make yourself a little fire kit. Um, you can use an Altoids tin with a rubber band, your Tinder kit, or uh, I've got this one. I've reused this mini Inferno kit from um, Dave Canterbury's uh, online Self-Reliance Outfitters store. These were full of these little discs called mini Infernos, and those are awesome. I'm out. Dave, i got to get some more, but uh, I filled this up with some Tinder I'll show you. On your person, you should always have at least a lighter or two in your pocket. This is the quickest way to get fire, right? Just having a lighter. Second quickest way and a little more reliable, um, So you know, because again, we're in Michigan, sometimes these things freeze, is a ferro rod. You can scrape this with the back of your knife or have the striker with it. This is my main ferro rod. Uh, as these get worn out, I just attach a, a little lanyard to them, a brightly colored piece of paracord. Stays in my pocket or in the clipped uh, buttoned around the button in my uh, uniform breast pocket so I always have the fire starter on me. Sometimes you go in the woods I'll wear my little uh, mini fire kit from Wazoo survival gear around my neck that's always handy but you keep at least one or two fire starting elements on your person. Now in my kit I would keep what's called my tinder kit so I open this up with some little tin I can I can uh, shut like I said I'm out of Dave's little mini infernos these are by Bigfoot Bushcraft, these little tinders. Um, just a little accelerant soaked cotton plug you can twist open or cut open with a knife, catches a spark uh, or a flame, and then it'll burn for four or five minutes and give you enough time to get your fire started. I just keep a bunch of those in there or some of those mini infernos. And uh, if I, in the interest of redundancy, I have another small ferro rod and a ceramic striker in my tinder kit. Uh, for starting up my fire or maybe even lighting my stove. Continuing on with our fire kit, sometimes you can't have an open fire. So a few places we go in Michigan where you're not allowed to open fire or they recommend a backpacking stove. Uh, the jet boil is an option for a lot of people. Uh, we do use that, some of our members. I just have a little uh, MSR pocket stove. I think this is their pocket rocket. It just screws down onto a canister of fuel. Right? that I take and then I can um, it screws down to the top and then I can boil water real quick but it's nice to have that little stove with me in areas I can't start or open a fire it goes in its little case and it's got this little stand that you can purchase to hold the canister stable sometimes that's helpful okay. another good option this one's by Vargo this is the uh, the hexagon wood stove this thing is super light uh, and I always carry this even when I know I'm going to be running a fire, because it's just a simple, it's just a simple natural fuel stove. It pops into place. You fill it with sticks or, or debris um, that can burn. You put your pot or your container right on top. And you're ready to go. I like this one because it's titanium and it folds and it's all one piece that stays together. And I just nestle this down into my container bag. So I always have a stove. And I don't have to worry about running out of fuel. And this goes in my container kit or my fire bag, just like that. Now, uh, as far as light, we typically recommend that everybody bring a headlamp uh, and an extra set of batteries. Sometimes we're out for an extended campaign, a second set of batteries. It's a good idea to have. Uh, rechargeable headlamps are kind of new. I never know when the charge is going to stop, so I prefer just a standard headlamp and an extra set of batteries. They don't take up much room, and it's my main... Um, source of light. Now we will use some small battery operated like black diamond lanterns at camp when we're out with the group and then uh, as far as my personal light I always have this little streamline uh, streamlight micro uh, on me at all times so I can use that if I need a secondary light source but it's not hands-free so the headlamp is my main light. As a backup light you should always have a couple non-battery operated options chem sticks everybody's seen these they cost a dollar you crack them, you get a little glow out of it. Um, they don't cost much. You can throw a couple, some mini ones for this demonstration. Throw a couple of those in your bag, or at least one. Another good option that I have with you so you don't have to manufacture one in the 
field is a candle, just a little emergency candle. If I can get this lit um, from the fire or with my fire kit, I can get a lot of light out of a candle. Um, I can use the wax for other things too to kind of um, use that out of my axe or my saw or my, my knives. Um, I can use this to wax up zippers that are frozen or stuck. Uh, that happens a lot in Michigan. So having a candle in my kit is a good idea. So this would be our official fire and light kit. Headlamp, extra batteries, one or two non-battery operated backups. If you're going for a stove, jet boil, a folding natural fuel stove, or a fuel canister with the accoutrements uh, to boil your water. An Altoids or some other sort of tin with um, your tinder in it. It could be natural tinder too. You could collect birch bark or um, make some cotton and petroleum fire gel, uh, fire starters at home. And then at least at least two different sources of starting fire on your person at all times while in the woods. Okay? So that's our uncivilized fire and light kit. And um, we have plenty of other videos showing how to do that, using the kit, starting the fire, that sort of thing, improvising light sources. And uh, check those out. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel as we're starting to get views going. And uh, that's all. See you in the next one.